Hey everybody, Tyler Muto here, and this is a drill that I call Follow Me, Yield to Me. This is a relationship drill. Whenever I start working with a dog, there are two things that I want that dog to understand about our relationship. One is that I'm here to be his guide, and I want him to follow me. Two is that I have to be his leader, and I need to know that he will respect my leadership and yield to me when necessary. So this drill uses movement, uses leash pressure, and also uses spatial pressure, or my body language pushing into the dog to teach him to both follow me and to yield to me. This dog here is named Polo. This is my first time working with Polo and he came in due to some aggression issues towards his own family members. He's actually caused some very serious bites so he definitely has some relationship issues. You're going to notice on these left hand turns that I'm making that he keeps attempting to dart out in front of me. It'll be more clear in a second. Uh, he's a little bit pushy. He doesn't really want to respect my personal space as I'm moving in his direction. Right here you can see it very clearly. And that's just a sign of the relationship imbalance that is going on in this dog's mind. So that's the importance of the yield to me portion of this. The follow me portion is going to happen when I move away from him and I use leash pressure to teach him to follow my lead. So when he's not following my lead, he feels pressure on the leash. When he is following my lead, that pressure goes away. So this is a lot of patterns in movement and every movement I'm making is in a response to the dog. The pushier he's being, the harder I'm going to cut into him on these left hand turns and the more quickly I'll move. And then as he kind of surrenders and yields to me, I release that pressure by opening up my movement and moving in more of a straight line or a looser curve. So this is pressure on, pressure on, pressure on and then pressure is going to come off in a moment as he begins to yield to me. Right there, I loosen up and pressure comes off, on again, off again. So this is a exercise that appears very simple, but when you start putting it into application, you'll see it's not quite as easy as it looks. And you really have to be reading the dog at every moment and listening to the dog at every moment and responding to what he's telling you. So he's a little bit pushy right now. You're going to see in a moment that he starts to ease up. Again, still a little bit pushy. This is pressure on, pressure on, pressure off. Switching over to following me. We ask him to follow. He does that, not, not too bad. And then again, yielding to me. He's getting a little bit better, but he still needs some work. You can see he doesn't really quite want to get out of my way. He still tries to just keep his body in front of me. It's very, very subtle stuff, but it does make a huge difference. And you're going to see in a moment the change that occurs when he starts to get it right. So this is about five or ten minutes into our session, and Polo's really starting to get it. He's still a little bit choppy in his movement. It's not quite as fluid as it's going to be once he really has things click in his head. But you can see he's being a lot more respectful of my space. He's making a lot of eye contact with me. And actually his attitude is changing. He was a little bit stiff in the beginning. Now his little nub of a tail is starting to wag. His mouth is open. He's got a little bit of a smile on. His demeanor is a little bit more relaxed. And he's certainly not trying to dart out in front of me anymore. So he's starting to learn that my personal space is very important to me. And I need him to respect that. And he's also learning that... I'm going to show him where I want him to put his body at any given moment in time. So this is a constant dance and a constant conversation that's happening between him and I. And when you get it right, the dog gets into a very, very passive state. Now this physical position right now is exactly what I want the end result to be. He's actually walking slightly behind me. And that's what I like to see in a dog like this. So this exercise is also going to help with your leash walking skills. To be clear, this is not something you're going to want to do if you're training your dog for competition obedience because the heel position in competition obedience is a little bit different and you don't want your dog to be behind you at all. So here's another dog. His name is Leroy. Leroy's done this a few times with me already. He's been in training for about a week, and I've done this exercise multiple times over that week, so he's pretty good at it. A similar type case, Leroy has attacked both of his owners before, uh, over being possessive over space, uh, couches, beds, objects, things like that. So again, a, a pretty pretty clear relationship issue with his owners. 
same kind of behavior when he first came in as far as being pretty pushy but by utilizing this exercise you can see he's becoming very very soft and respectful staying more in that follower position it's this is his first time seeing the video camera so he's a little bit distracted and that's perfectly okay we, we would expect that a little bit but notice he yields space to me very very well there's a little cushion of air between him and I and we don't really want that cushion of air to collapse so we want him to always give us a little bit of clearance there he was slightly in front of me so I pushed into him a little bit harder again that's just a way to increase the pressure we're putting on him and then I soften up and release that pressure so this is the follow me portion yield to me portion it's yielding nicely and I'll switch back to follow me in a second again notice the position of the dog he's walking slightly behind my hip and that's exactly where I want a dog to walk for proper relationship purposes. I want him to stay slightly behind where he recognizes me as the leader and himself as the follower.